I'll never forget the conversation I had with my father when I told him I was engaged. He pulled me aside, his expression serious, and said, Lauren, are you really sure about marrying this man, Larry? I know you love him, but I don't think he's the right person for you. Confused, I asked, why are you saying this, Dad? He loves me and respects me. I don't care that he doesn't have as much money as we do. My father sighed, his voice soft but firm. Lauren, you know I built my wealth from the ground up. I would never look down on someone just because they're not from the same financial background. But there's something about Larry that worries me. He's a bit of a shady character, and his mother is no better. I was taken aback. What do you mean, Dad? I don't understand. He hesitated, then said, Maybe it's just a father's instinct, but I don't believe this man truly loves you. Yes, he's affectionate but I've heard him talk about how rich you are. I overheard him bragging to his friends, saying he had bagged the rich brat. And Linda, she just laughed and agreed with him. I felt a pang in my heart, trying to defend Larry. You must be mistaken, Dad. Larry would never say those things about me. And Linda cares about me too. She would definitely scold him if he ever joked like that. But deep down, I wondered if there was some truth in my father's words. Sometimes, I wish I had listened to him. At the time, I was just a knave girl in love, desperate to hold on to something after losing my mother three years before. My dad was ill, and I knew he didn't have much time left. I clung to Larry and Linda because they gave me a sense of purpose, a reason to keep going. My father had built a comfortable life for us through hard work and smart investments. I had a decent job and earned a moderate salary, so overall, we were doing well. Larry and Linda, on the other hand, didn't have as much. Larry made more money than I did, but he came from a modest background. His job didn't bring in the kind of money that could make someone rich, and I could tell that bothered him. He and Linda liked fancy and expensive things and Larry often complained about not having enough money to buy them. I was always eager to help them out with the little allowance my father gave me. I even let Larry and Linda move into my house after we got married, but instead of being grateful, they seemed dissatisfied. They would say things like, It's such a shame you live in a small house. Your dad lives in a mansion, so why did you buy such a tiny townhouse? Looking back, I realize how much I overlooked because I wanted so badly to make things work. I ignored the little red flags and convinced myself that everything would be okay, but in the end, I wish I had trusted my father's instincts. I don't make a lot of money. Larry's dad lives in a mansion because he's wealthy, but I'm just a regular office worker with a modest salary. Buying this house was a real challenge for me and I was only able to manage it because my dad helped with the down payment. Larry, however, wasn't impressed. He said, Well, if your dad helped you out, he should have gotten you a better place. I'm sure your mom left him something to give you when you got older. I tried to explain, I'm not entitled to anything, Linda. Whatever my mom left behind is my dad's now. She passed away suddenly, and there was no will. Honestly, I don't mind if I don't get anything. I'm content with the way things are. Linda scoffed, that's a ridiculous thing to say, Lauren. I would have loved to inherit a lot of money. You know what, your dad should trade houses with us. He lives alone, so he doesn't need all that space anyway, right, Larry? Larry nodded in agreement, adding, yeah, Lauren, you should ask him. I felt a surge of protectiveness and responded firmly, absolutely not. That house belongs to my dad, and he deserves to live comfortably as long as he's alive. Linda then remarked, well, he won't be alive for long now that he's sick. We can wait and compromise for a few years and see what happens. Ultimately, everything will be yours after your dad passes. You'll have plenty of money to buy a big house and more. The way Linda and Larry were already making plans to spend my inheritance was deeply unsettling. It didn't help that they frequently urged me to ask my dad for more money. We weren't struggling financially. Larry and Linda just wanted the luxurious lifestyle they imagined, 
even though it wasn't within our reach. Honestly, I was growing tired of their behavior. However, the real drama unfolded after my father passed away. His battle with cancer ended sooner than I had expected, leaving me devastated. I was heartbroken, but Larry and Linda offered little support. Instead, they were more concerned about the date of the will reading and showed no interest in helping with the funeral arrangements. To make matters worse, they even refused to attend the funeral, saying that my dad was no one to them. At that moment, I was overwhelmed with grief and anger. My dad's warnings kept echoing in my mind, and I couldn't help but feel suspicious of Larry and Linda. I began to doubt their intentions, wondering if they had ever truly cared about me or if they were only interested in what they could gain. I was starting to worry that Larry and Linda were only interested in my inheritance. When it came time for the reading of the will, they weren't allowed to be present, and they were furious. Larry snapped, why on earth aren't we allowed to be there? This is absurd. Brian was my father-in-law. Linda chimed in, equally outraged. Yes, this is ridiculous. We're family, and we have every right to know what Brian left behind. At the very least, my son should be allowed to be there. I tried to keep calm and explained. Your son isn't mentioned in the will, Linda, so he doesn't have the right to be there. Why are you two so fixated on the inheritance? You didn't even bother to come to the funeral. It was ironic how suddenly my dad mattered to them when it came to the possibility of getting some money. I was really annoyed with both Linda and Larry, but what made things worse was how relentless they were. As soon as I got back from the will reading, they pounced on me, eager for details. They weren't allowed to see the will themselves, and that only made them more persistent. I was struggling with the grief of losing my father, but instead of offering any words of comfort, they were only interested in one thing. Linda asked bluntly, So, we've been wondering for a while now. How much inheritance did you get from your parents? You must have received a lot of money. Tell us how much. I looked at them and said, Unfortunately, my parents didn't leave me any money, so I didn't receive anything. Linda's eyes widened in disbelief. What? You didn't get any money, but your parents were rich. They should have left you something. I don't believe you didn't get any money. You're lying to us. There's no way your parents didn't leave you a single penny. Larry joined in, pressing me, no money at all. The will didn't even mention you getting any kind of money. You can't be serious. I sighed and tried to stay patient. No, Larry there was no money in my inheritance. The lawyer told me that. You can even check my bank balance in a few days and see for yourself. But what about all their wealth? Linda asked, her voice edged with frustration. You're their only child. Who's going to get everything they had? I shook my head and said, I don't know about that, Linda. The lawyer just told me I didn't get any money, and honestly, that's okay with me. It was my parents' money and it's up to them who they chose to leave it to. Linda looked furious and blurted out, That's ridiculous. You need to fight for that money. It should be yours. There is no money, Larry, I repeated firmly. They didn't have much left in the end, and whatever was left, they gave to charity. They had been planning this for a while. Larry and Linda looked completely taken aback, anger simmering just below the surface. I couldn't understand why they were so upset. I almost gave in and told them everything, but something held me back. There was a growing doubt in my mind that my husband and mother-in-law were up to something, something that wasn't in my best interest. I decided to wait and see how they would react, but they didn't let up. Larry and Linda kept pressuring me for more information, as if they didn't believe what I had told them. The more they pushed, the more uneasy I felt, sensing that there was more to their behavior than just disappointment over the inheritance. I decided enough was enough. I told them firmly that I didn't get any money and even offered to show them my bank account in a few days. A month passed and nothing showed up. During this time, Larry became more distant and stopped being affectionate. He was always checking my account and constantly hounding me for information about my inheritance. It became clear where this was heading. 
Finally, one day, I decided to put an end to it. I showed them my bank statements and said, See, I told you that I didn't receive anything. I'm not hiding any secret inheritance money from you. Do you believe me now? Larry looked at the statements and said, Wow, our years of hard work just went down the drain then. So her parents weren't rich, and she didn't even get $3,500 in the will. This is ridiculous. I can't believe this. Linda echoed his sentiment. I can't believe this either, Larry. I stayed in this marriage for nothing. I married Lauren for nothing. It was all a waste of time. Feeling hurt and confused, I asked, What the hell does that mean, Larry? Why are you talking like this? Linda answered for him. Why do you think he's saying these things, Lauren? Who the hell would marry you without thinking about the money? My son simply married you so that we could rely on your inheritance. Now I see that you didn't even get a penny. I can't believe I wasted three freaking years on a useless girl like you. I could have done so much better. I was stunned to hear them speak that way about me. I finally realized that Larry married me for money. My parents were right about him and his mom they were gold diggers. I was so done with my husband and mother-in-law. I was breaking inside, but what they said next turned me to stone. Linda looked at Larry solemnly and said, What's done is done, Larry. But now it's time for you to divorce Lauren. There is no reason for you to stay with her anymore. You will have time to find a new rich wife. This time we will make sure she actually has some money to her name. I was in disbelief. Are you freaking kidding me, Linda? You're asking Larry to divorce me over money. Larry, are you going to listen to her? Larry didn't hesitate. Of course, I would listen to her, Lauren. I married you so that my mom and I could have a comfortable life. We grew up poor, and I didn't even go to college. I had no way of earning a lot of money. I was horrified. So you pretended to love me and tricked me into marrying you. You thought my parents would give me lots of money. Larry nodded, and I felt my heart shatter. Yes, Lauren. I thought your parents would leave you a lot of money, but now I see that they didn't. It was all for nothing. With those words, everything became clear. My parents were right all along. Larry and Linda were only interested in my inheritance, and now that it was gone, they had no use for me. I knew I had to leave them and start a new life, free from their greed and deception. I was willing to share everything with Larry, believing that our marriage was built on love and trust. But when he spoke, I realized how wrong I was. Yes, that's what I thought too, he said coldly. It was the only way I could give my mom the life she always wanted. But now, I see that my efforts were pointless. Mom's right I need to divorce you and keep looking. His words hit me like a ton of bricks. The casual, almost indifferent way he talked about ending our marriage made me question my own sanity. How could he be so detached, so unfeeling? Linda and Larry continued to voice their frustration, complaining about the marriage and about me, but I stopped listening. I was too overwhelmed, too lost in my thoughts, trying to process what they had just said. Their complete lack of emotion and Larry's sudden change in behavior were both heartbreaking and infuriating. At first, I felt a wave of anger rise up inside me. I wanted to scream, to throw things, to let out all the pain and frustration that had been building up. But instead, I took a deep breath and remained calm. Okay then, Larry, I said quietly. If a divorce is what you want, you'll get it. I've never been one to refuse your demands, so I might as well give in to this one as a last favor. Linda, sensing an opportunity, quickly added, So, you'll agree to a mutual divorce? It'll save us both a lot of money. And don't even think about trying to get alimony from my son. We'll fight you every step of the way. It's best if you just agree to this. I nodded, realizing that I didn't have much choice. You're right. I don't have a lot of money right now, so I've decided on something. I'll agree to a mutual divorce, but only if you sign a clause stating that we won't share any of our assets. We'll each walk away with what we have, and nothing more. Larry agreed without hesitation. That's not a problem at all. 
You don't have much, and neither do I at the moment. If you can forego alimony, I'll sign the divorce papers and won't claim anything from you. We discussed the details of the divorce, making sure we were on the same page. I could see the relief on their faces, they were both happy that I wasn't making a fuss. I guess they didn't expect me to be so calm about it. But the truth was, ever since that day, I had been crying on my way to and from work. I would sit in the parking lot of my office, crying for an hour before and after work, trying to pull myself together. Larry never noticed my puffy eyes, never asked why I was leaving early for work or coming home late. Linda didn't even bother looking at me after she found out I had no money. Their behavior only made me more determined to get out of the marriage as soon as possible. I knew I had to stay strong and move on with my life. Even though it hurt deeply, I was ready to close this chapter and start anew. The way they treated me, the way they were more interested in money than in our relationship, made me realize that I deserved better. I deserved to be with someone who loved me for who I am, not for what I could offer them financially. In the end, I agreed to the mutual divorce, and I made sure that we each kept our own assets. It was a painful process, but I knew it was the right decision. I had to let go of the life I thought I had and focus on building a new one, free from the greed and deception that had poisoned my marriage. I decided that I needed some space from Larry and Linda, so I had them move out of my house and into a rented place nearby. They settled in quickly, and while we waited for the divorce to be finalized, Larry kept his word and didn't demand a share of my house. I also didn't ask for any alimony. In his eyes, it was a fair deal, but I had no idea how much I had underestimated the situation. The truth of it all came to light on the day our divorce was finalized. I went over to their new place to drop off my wedding and engagement rings. When I handed them over, I said, Larry, I just wanted to return these to you. This marriage only brought bad times into my life, and I don't want to keep any reminders of it. Larry looked at me surprised. Are you sure you want to return them? You might need the money someday. Linda, never one to miss a chance to be snide, added, It's so funny how you're giving them back. You must have laughed at our poverty before, but look where you are now. My son is being generous, giving you the rings back. You might need to sell them when your stupid job doesn't pay enough. We don't want the rings anyway, they're cheap ones. I kept my composure and replied, What would I need to sell the rings for, Linda? I'm not embarrassed. You don't need to worry about my financial situation. Linda smirked and said, Oh, we already know. Your parents didn't leave you anything, probably because they lost everything due to bad financial decisions, leaving their daughter with nothing. At that point, I couldn't help but laugh out loud. Linda looked puzzled, and so did Larry. I could see that Larry was annoyed by his mother's behavior and also surprised by my laughter. Linda snapped, Why the hell are you laughing? Did I say something funny? I looked her straight in the eye and said, it's hilarious that you think I'm destitute, Linda. It's also funny that you believe my parents lost all their fortune. Linda, clearly offended, retorted, Well, of course you're destitute. Your parents didn't even leave you a penny. They must have messed up and ruined your life by not leaving you an inheritance. I smiled and said calmly, I never said I didn't receive an inheritance, Linda. I simply told you that I didn't get any money. My parents actually left me plenty of inheritance. Linda's eyes widened in disbelief. What do you mean you have an inheritance? I'm so confused. I continued, my parents could see through you and Larry for what you are little gold diggers, so they made a secret clause in their will. It stated that I wouldn't receive any monetary inheritance right away. Instead, I was given something much more valuable. Larry now clearly agitated asked, what are you talking about? What did they leave you? I looked at them both and said, My parents left me this entire neighborhood as my inheritance. Linda and Larry were stunned. Linda stammered, What? You own this neighborhood now? How is that possible? We would have known about your inheritance if that were true. 
We even signed the lease with an estate manager who didn't tell us the name of the owner. I explained, my parents wanted me to wait for a year before I could take full control of the properties, so everything was kept quiet. But now, I own this entire neighborhood, including the place you're living in. Linda and Larry were left speechless. The realization that they had been living in a place I owned, after all their scheming, was too much for them to handle. The tables had turned completely, and they were finally exposed for who they truly were. I turned to leave, feeling a sense of closure and satisfaction. I had seen through their greed and managed to come out stronger on the other side. Now, I was ready to move on and build a new life, free from their manipulation and lies. I got my inheritance, and my parents wanted me to test if you were with me for love or money. Well, you both failed the test, so now you won't get anything from me. The estate manager was put in charge by my parents to take care of the property before I inherited it. They were very smart, you know. Larry scoffed, that's impossible. I don't believe anything you're saying. You're just embarrassed because you don't have any money left. I replied, oh really, Larry? Is that what you and your mother think? Why don't you call your landlord and ask him yourself? Linda and Larry quickly called their landlord to check what I had said. Since their landlord was actually the estate manager, he told them everything. When they hung up, they looked shocked and panicked. You lied to us, Linda stammered. You tricked us into thinking you didn't have anything, but you own the entire housing society now. How dare you trick us like this? You wanted to keep all your wealth to yourself. So you made Larry divorce you and sign papers saying he wouldn't take anything from you. I couldn't help but laugh at their nerve. It was finally hitting them how badly they had messed up, and now it was time for some well-deserved karma. I said, it's funny you're accusing me of being dishonest. Larry, you tricked me into marrying you by pretending you loved me. And Linda, you helped him with this plan and even told him to divorce me. If anyone here was scamming, it was the two of you. As for my inheritance, you asked how much money I got, and I answered truthfully. This was all a misunderstanding on your part. Linda tried to reason with me. What's done is in the past. Why don't we try again? We did spend five years together, and it would be a shame to throw it all away. I shook my head and said, So now you want me back in your life? Funny how you were so eager to start fresh with a new girl. I hear you're already seeing someone rich. Don't worry, I'll let her know what a snake you are, Larry. Larry and Linda started begging me not to ruin his new relationship. Larry pleaded, saying that if I wasn't willing to give him another chance, I should mess up his future. I told him to get lost and also informed them that I would kick them out once the property was officially mine. They panicked and started begging even more. In the weeks that followed, Linda and Larry kept coming to my house, pleading for forgiveness. They already had an eviction on their record, so it was unlikely anyone else would rent to them. The only reason they were still staying on my property was because I had asked the estate manager to allow it. I also contacted Larry's new girlfriend and told her everything. She was horrified by what Larry and Linda had done and broke up with him immediately. She even showed me the text messages as proof. After this mess, Larry and Linda came over, yelling at me and calling me names. I quickly called the police and had them removed from my property. Once the property was officially in my name, I kicked them out very quickly. They didn't expect me to follow through with my threat. When they showed up again, I called the police, who gave them a stern warning. I also filed for a restraining order. It turned out that the whole town knew about what had happened. Larry and Linda were shunned by their friends and had to leave the city to start over somewhere else. Meanwhile, I'm enjoying my new wealth and finally free from those gold-digging leeches.